All right, everyone. Are you ready to paint? Are you ready to do some staining? This is phase four of making your better cornhole boards, the best boards on your block. My name is Scott. You can head over to Instagram and follow me at Mossboards. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Okay, at this point, you've cut and prepped your tops, your frames are attached, your legs are built, and those are attached. So now that you're ready to put some designs on these boards, you've got to think about how you're going to apply those designs. There's a bunch of ways to do this. Most builders are going to use decals or wraps. Just print those out, slap them on the boards. I don't mess around with that stuff. I like to use stains and I like to use paints. I use stains more than anything else and I like to use gel stains. You can get those from General Finishes or Minwax or Verithane. I'm not sponsored, <laughs> so pick the one you like best. I probably like the General Finishes brand the best. It's really smooth, it stencils nicely, clean edges, not a lot of bleed. So that's my preference, but pick the one that you like best. With paints, I like to use cheap $2 bottles of craft paint from the hobby store. Head over to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, stock up on a bunch of different colors of paint. You can hang on to those or just pick the colors as you need them. They're cheap. You can use them once. You can throw the bottle away. They come out nice and bright and they stencil really nicely too. The equipment that I use, I use a vinyl cutter. It's 28 inches wide. It's the cheapest one at uscutter.com and mine is an MH721 MK2. This is the cheapest one. This machine will run you about 300 bucks and then the supplies for the machine runs about 70 to 100 dollars depending on how much you buy. I buy 24 inch rolls, uh, 50 yards of the vinyl and 100 yard 12 inch rolls of the transfer tape. The vinyl I use is Oracal 631. It's perfect for applying them to cornhole boards. I use HT55 Oracal Aura Tape, and that's perfect for moving the vinyl from the paper backing over to the work surface. So to walk through these steps one at a time, first you find the image that you like. Make sure that it's a vectorized image. That means it has clean edges and separate colors so that the software can trace that image and send it over to your vinyl cutter. Here's the image I want to make. Here's an example of the boards when they're done. So first you find the design, then you vectorize it in your software, then you send it to the cutter. This cut job will take anywhere from 2 to 20 minutes depending on how complex the design is. It could take more, but you need a better computer than I have to send a more complex design and anything that takes longer than 20 minutes to cut is going to be a huge chore to pick apart. After you've cut your vinyl, you need to pick it. You're going to pick or weed. <clears throat> Weeding is the industry term for pulling all the bits of vinyl that you wanted to stain or paint on your first pass. I like to think of this as screen printing, where you have different passes. The first pass is the first color you wanted to stain or paint. After you have that all pulled, you'll apply your transfer tape. This allows you to separate the image, kind of like a window sticker, from the paper backing before you apply it to your work surface. When you apply this to your work surface, I like to use this hinge technique where you use bits of tape on both sides of the board, pulling up one side, removing the paper backing. Make sure you use a nice clean cut, squeegee that down, remove the tape, and then remove the other half of the vinyl. This way your image doesn't move and you're not trying to adhere the whole thing at once because there are no redos. <laughs> That'll get real challenging if you put it down in the wrong position because you can't just pull it off and try to stick it again. Now you can remove all of your transfer tape and you're ready to stain. Cover up any areas. You don't want to slip with the stain and hit a spot of wood you'll have to clean up later. This gel stain is great. You want to apply it pretty sparingly. 
because if it builds up too much, it can bleed under the vinyl stencil. So wipe most of the material off and then apply it with uh, a light touch. The other great thing about staining with gel stains is if you wanted to apply a darker color over the top of a lighter color, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend doing this for large areas because it tends to get a little blotchy, but for small areas like the center of the star, it works great. So I'm just masking the areas that I wanted to leave the medium color and leaving exposed the images, the image areas that I want to stain the darker Java color. This basic technique is used for all of my designs. Sometimes it's one stencil like this and frog tape or painter's tape, the green stuff or the blue stuff, to mask and stain the second shade or third shade or sometimes fourth shade. Other times I'll make two separate stencils and apply one over the top of the image after I apply the first color. I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Now you're going to come back and remove all of the vinyl. Be careful when you remove the vinyl. You don't want to rip it off too fast and you don't want to pull any of the grain off with the vinyl. So pull it off at a sharp angle. I like to pull it diagonally from the wood grain and it tends to pull up less of those fibers. Here's an example of cutting a really complex image without the high speed on. This image took about 20 minutes or so to cut, but it was a really complex image you can see here, and it was big. It's 24 inches wide, 52 inches long, so this one took a long time to cut. Okay, let's use this tree design with the deer on it as an example. This has two separate stencils, one for the darker java color, and then a separate stencil with a separate image, which is the mahogany color that went what appears to be behind it. So first you would peel the darker of the two images, Apply your transfer tape and move that over to the board. After staining that darker image, you do the same thing for the lighter color image and apply that over the top of the darker image, just making sure you align it as perfectly as possible so those two separate images, two separate colors, appear next to each other and then create one kind of three-dimensional image. Wherever you have little gaps and need to clean up, you can come back with the other shade and clean up those areas as much as you can. This is always the best part of the build, is revealing the image after you've applied your stains or your paints. So here's a few examples of the finishing steps and then the reveal of how the boards looked when they were done. Whenever you're applying paint over the top of a stained background, like this is red stain with paints over the top of it, I would always suggest that you seal the background first with a coat of clear coat, sand it so it's smooth, and then apply the new stencils that you're gonna be painting the designs over the top of that sealed surface 
so that the vinyl doesn't pull up any of your stained wood fibers. Alright, so those are the basic techniques, using a vinyl cutter to create stencils, and then a lot of planning in how you're going to apply those stencils and apply your stains or apply your paints and the order in which you do those, the layers in which you do them, it takes a little bit of planning, it takes a little bit of practice. Go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, go over to Instagram and follow me at Mossports. Talk to you later, have a great day.